Hello everybody and welcome to a much different than usual round glass review. For this video I bought six less than $130, now that was at the time, APS-C 35mm f1.2 lenses from eBay and AliExpress. These ranged from $40 on the cheap end for the newer lens to $129 on the high end for the seven artisans. The Chi car, which is a rebrand of the Per Gear, came in at around $110, and the Hengijia, Caxinda, and Rai spray were all at $79.95. Let's call it $80. So the Chi car, which is a rebad, the rebadged Per Gear, has a separate and in-depth, already live round glass review video. The Seven Artisans will also receive its own full review at some point in the coming months. I'm Never shooting with the other four again. Not a judgment on them, even though I know exactly how that sentence just sounded when I said it. But it's just that I don't have the time to make individual videos for every single lens being made today. So uh, I'm going to stop at those two that I'm doing already. Well, that said, I do have sample images from all of the other lenses except for the Rise Spray. And uh, I'll explain why later in this video. And so I'll show those as well throughout the video. But in this video, the main point is that I'm going to try to compare the performance of the six lenses. So up front, here are some interesting notes. The Caxinda, Hengijia, and Rai spray are all the same lens. Now, interestingly, all three of them have different actual infinity focus points. They're all marked the same, they all focus past infinity, and they all focus a different amount past infinity. The Rise Spray arrived in EOS M mount instead of the Sony E that I had ordered it in. So it was used the least, and I really don't have any comparison photos for it, or actually I don't think I have any photos that I kept for this video for it, because every time I used it, I had to remove the EOS M mount ring and swap it with the Sony E mount ring from one of the other lenses. It performed in the exact same manner as the Hengijia and the Caxinda, it looks the same, we can call it the same. Second point, the Seven Artisans is definitely a unique design among these, as is the Per Gear. I think that the Niwer, based on image characteristics, is also its own design, but I couldn't verify. Only the uh, Niwer and the Seven Artisans had optical formulas available online, so I can tell you they're different, and the Niwer's front glass element is, I believe, a different size than the Per Gears. So, also the Niwer, like I mentioned, just performs way differently than the Caxinda and the Hengijias. The third point, performance in the three identical lenses was, not shockingly, identical. Performance among the three other lenses varied substantially. And the fourth point, the Seven Artisans in this video is the first version of that lens, not the second. So I did not include the second version of the Seven Artisans 35-1-2 in this comparison. There's a lot of overlap with these, and I'll try to uh, also in indicate where there are some differences. But the focal length and AOV on all of these lenses is 35 millimeters, which is f1.2, and on an APS-C camera, that's 46 degrees. The aperture range is 1.2 on the fast end for all of them, and they all stop down to either 16 or 22, depending on the lens. Now, big asterisk here, that range is the as-marked aperture range on the lens. However, performance on these appears to vary wildly at the same aperture in terms of shutter speed and so forth. So I don't trust the accuracy of any of the aperture markings on any of these lenses, except the Seven Artisans, which does seem to be pretty accurate. Filter size varied from 43, I think Seven Artisans is 43 millimeters, up to 52. The closest focus varied, with the per gear focusing to 25 centimeters and the rest of them focusing to approximately 50 centimeters. In close focus tests, I didn't take the per gear to 25 centimeters in this video. I only brought it out to the same focus point as the Seven Artisans. All of the close focus samples that you see here are based on the Seven Artisans closest focus point because all of the lenses could reach that. All of these are manual focus lenses. For the systems that are available, they are all available for most, if not all, mirrorless mounts. Nikon Z and EOS R are possibly accepted for some of these. 
but the exact mount options will vary by lens. The long and short of it is, if you have a mirrorless camera, you can find some brand of 35mm f1.2 lens to put on the front of it. The weight varies by the lens. Most, if not all of them, are 200 grams or less, and the 7 Artisans, I believe, was the lightest, coming in at 150 grams. So first tip, all of these lenses should be used on your camera with your camera set to aperture priority mode. Next tip, ignore the aperture marking numbers as they're of varied accuracy, and instead just shoot with what looks good through your viewfinder. Ignore the depth of field scales as well as I didn't find them to be accurate on any of these lenses. I think the Seven Artisans was the, was the closest, but uh, there were some inconsistencies with the depth of field scales on that lens too. If you want an accurate infinity hard stop, only the Pergear and Seven Artisans provided that on the six lenses that I bought. All four of the others, the Hengijia, Kaxinda, Rise Spray, and Niwer, focus well past infinity. To compare the lens's performance, I took some shots and cut them into five pieces. I included both the Hengijia and Kaxinda here to demonstrate that they do in fact perform in the exact same manner. These stitched together shots that you see should show how all of the lenses perform at the same subject distance and aperture. So after you see these comparison shots, I'm going to scroll through the exact same shots for all of the lenses. Three different shots at the same focal points for each. There's two where the boots are small, and smaller, it's further away. The first one's going to be the boots in focus and then scrolling through the apertures from f1.2 to f16. The second will be focused at infinity, not the infinity mark, but the actual infinity point scrolling through the apertures again, 1, 2 to 16. That will let you see how the depth of field changes with each of the lenses at the closest, one of the closer focus points and also infinity focus. And then the last thing is going to be a set of photos of my old hiking boots at the, the Seven Artisans closest focus points. So all the Seven Artisans, Hengijia, Kaxinda, and Niwa all have the same closest focus point. The per gear can go much closer. But to compare them apples to apples, they're all focused at the same point. So each lens has three photo sets in this series, and they're marked as well with the aperture and the lens name in the same spot on each image.
For this section, I'll discuss the lenses as a group and highlight individual performers where warranted. For sharpness, all of the lenses performed in a similar manner with the exception that the newer was a good deal softer than the rest. I mean, in general, whatever sharpness level you expect from the lenses being made in China right now and being sold on eBay, Amazon, and uh, AliExpress, these perform in that same vein, especially for the given price point. They're suitably sharp in the center. They have a decent sharp center point, and then they get very soft towards the periphery. For build quality, this was mixed, surprisingly so. The Seven Artisans has the best build quality by a substantial margin, and it's followed then by the Per Gear. The Niwer was the worst. It feels flimsy, it has a lot of focus slop, the uh, focusing ring kind of wiggles a little bit, and also the metal on the Niwer felt th the thinnest. It was possible for me if I squeezed the knee were too hard while I was trying to focus to cause the lens to bind up because I was pinching the circular shape out of the lens. That's, that's not a compliment. Out of focus area characteristics range from lens to lens. To my eye, the per gear has the best out of focus area characteristics, which is to say the smoothest, the less, the least jarring. The Hengijia and identical lenses have a fairly generic and boring out of focus area characteristic. Honestly, everything about those lenses was kind of underwhelming and generic. The Seven Artisans has, in Seven Artisans style, slightly chaotic and bright out of focus area characteristics. If you're a fan of that look and the, a fan of the look that the Seven Artisans lenses deliver, this lens is very much in that vein. The Niwer's out-of-focus area characteristics were, to my eye, unpleasant. Really, really unpleasant. Like, I think you might be getting the idea that the Niwer is not going to have anything nice said about it in this video. Yeah. For design flaws like coma, astigmatism, and chrom chromatic aberration, these lenses have different amounts and types of those. The most common being flaring and, and some chromatic aberration, especially away from the center of the lens. The Seven Artisans flared the most. It had tons and tons of flare. Like it was, it was there like it was designed to be. The Niwer had a very substantial and pronounced hot spot in many lighting conditions. Now, a hot spot is basically just an area in the center of the, the image where uh, light that has bounced around inside of the lens comes to focus, well, comes to rest, not to be focused. Basically, it's a diffuse area of stray light in the center of the image, and it makes that center part of the image abnormally bright, and that's a problem. It's very hard to get rid of in post because it also often changes the color pitch uh, and, and tone and spectrum within that area, in addition just to making it bright. And it's also not an even shape on the knee where it's kind of like a teardrop or egg shaped space and it's different colors, different hues and different brightnesses at different apertures and with the sun in different areas or outside of the frame. And that flaw, that hot spotting ought to disqualify the knee from your purchase consideration, even if you are able to get it for $40 like I did, which means you could buy three of those for the cost of one Seven Artisans. But I'll tell you what, the Seven Artisans is definitely more than three times better than the knee So all of these lenses are inexpensive and all of them perform that way. Overall, I would say that if you want only one of these and you feel like you have to have an APS-C or Micro Four Thirds 35 millimeter F1.2, the per gear is going to be your best choice. It's the most versatile, it performs exceedingly well compared to its peer group, and it's also affordable. The Seven Artisans will give you that signature Seven Artisans look, and if you like that look, then that's the lens for you. The Caxinda and its clones are readily forgettable, and the Niwer should be avoided like a plague rat, unless you like the Seven Artisans look and want to dial it up a notch and plan on never shooting at something smaller than about f2, because in certain lighting conditions, the hotspot starts getting noticeable around 2.8. Many of these lenses appear to cut engineering and quality control corners. 
issues like improperly aligned infinity focus points, inaccurate aperture markings, and inaccurate focusing scales are issues because when those don't work properly, it indicates that the photographer can expect these lenses to have other problems. As we say in marketing, if part of the thing that you're writing smells like fish, then the entire thing that you're writing smells like a wharf. So one major problem, or even just significant problem in terms of engineering and design, makes the entire lens suspect as well it should. If you are comfortable with manual focus and manual aperture use, these lenses are all laid out very well and can be learned easily and quickly, and that's a positive for all of them. Also, all of them, excepting the newer, handle well and have acceptable, by acceptable, the Hengigia and its clones are acceptable, too good for the seven artisans in per gear build quality. The newer I bought, like I mentioned, has focus slop. It feels loose. The metal kind of warps when I squeeze it. It doesn't respond quickly to focus. It feels like something I would have made with spare parts from other lenses and uh, you know, I don't even think that highly of the lenses I make, so I, you shouldn't either. I think that this is going to be the best bottom line that I can give you. With camera lenses, you are more likely than not to receive the quality that you pay for. When a lens costs around $100, the quality is going to suffer compared to similar spec higher end lenses, and even in the $200 to $400 range. And period. End of story on that. So here are the uses that I think these lenses are best for. The first is as something cheap and fun to play around with. Yeah, they're low stress. They can deliver images that look very interesting and uh, maybe even can take some very nice and flattering portraits in the right setting. The second of two is that they can be something to put on an inexpensive camera to take into areas where your gear could be easily stolen or damaged. You can, without question, take good photos with all of these lenses. They can all deliver results that turn your head. That said, they will not do that because of anything inherent to the lens itself, but they will if your creative voice and photographic vision can deliver captivating results with whatever gear you have in front of you.